So this video is about an experience my friends and I had in Medina when we got there. We met a remarkable individual, Brother Suleiman, who was kind enough to actually give us a personal tour of Medina as someone who's been raised there and spent a lifetime there. Just really honored to have the have his company and enjoy his insights as we traveled and we ended up at the foot of the mountain of Uhud, particularly the place where the Prophet Sallallahu had to escape from the onslaught after he was nearly killed. And it just, I couldn't help myself but remember the ayat from Surah Ali Imran that were talking about this incredible incident and when those ayat came and how the archers that left their position must have felt when they were hearing these ayat. And those of the Sahaba, they have so much guilt on them. The body of Hamza radiallahu anhu, they're, they're seeing it as their fault. The, when they see the Rasul stand on the mimbar, وسلم, three facial injuries according to one narration, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the helmet piercing into his jaw, another side of the jaw. Can you, when, if you have a dental problem, you sound the same? No. Your face changes. You're hard to look at. They're looking at the, the, the injured face of their Habib وسلم, sitting in that khutbah, and then ayat are going to come about them. Can you imagine the, like, Ya laytani kuntu turaba, if only I was dirt? Right? I, like, and what does Allah do? Like, this is a moment where somebody can say to themselves, I am doomed. Nothing I do after this will be any good. Look at what I did. Look at what I caused. There's no hope for me. After that, who's going to commit a bigger mistake than hurting the Prophet ﷺ in a way that he's never been hurt before? The Sahaba that are dead, all their wives and children that are crying. From a special mercy from Allah that you are lenient towards them. <laughs> and if you had been harsh and you had been tough hearted, they would have run away from you. Maybe they wouldn't have run away from you because they don't believe in you. They would have run away out of shame. So they can't even face him. So pardon them with love. Lovingly forgive them. And ask Allah to forgive them. This is the part that kills me. He says, okay, forgiving is enough. He says, and in the next time, take their opinions. This is the Allah's Nabi. He gets opinion from Allah. And of all the people who should take opinion, take the opinion of Allah. No, take the opinion of those who you could have been harsh towards. Make them feel included. And you have the right to. You have the right to never listen to them again. Yeah, you have a right to say, don't show me your face, it reminds me of Hamza. You have a right to say that. You can be triggered by just seeing them. Allah says, no, consult them in opinion. Why? Because He says, Allah is teaching us, that how, do you, how does a person, we know Allah forgives. How do you know if a human being is forgiven? When they include you in their life the way they used to. And they need that. He, Allah knows they need that. This, was, this became about them. This should have been about Allah's Messenger Allah starts instructing His Rasul. Trust in Him Take their opinion. And then when you, after that, when you make a decision, trust in Allah. And there are free apps. Now, free apps, you can download Quran, yeah? Like if I don't constantly connect the words of Allah, to the pain of my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't know what Qur'an is. It just sounds. These words are expensive. These words, are, this cannot be paid for with money. This was already paid for with something that the world, the whole world isn't worth what this was paid for. 